Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of uh, Beardy's Books, bringing you my comic book haul for Wednesday, September 14th, 2016. Got uh, eight books to go through for you today and there's a lot of other new stuff out today. So as always, feel free to check out your local comic shop. Um, if you're, again, if you're in the uh, Mechanicsburg or York areas of Pennsylvania, please stop into either Comics Connection location. We will be happy to point you to the stuff I'm going to show you today or um, any other plethora of titles and things that are out there uh, of interest for you. So, uh, but today, um, new books, September 14th, 2016. We're going to jump right in with the first one it is All New X-Men, issue number 13. Uh, we're, again, we're, we're moving on from the Apocalypse War stories and uh, this, this is kind of a little bit of a classic uh, X-Men vibe. You've got um, Young Iceman, uh, Idy and Evan, young uh, Kid Apocalypse, basically, um, as they are, or Genesis, I guess, as he goes by his call sign. They are out, uh, they go out for a night. They go to Miami, and they're hanging out, dealing with, um, just trying to get Bobby a date, just to have him go out and talk to people and, and see what happens. So, um, and of course, it's the X-Men, so it's never just smooth and nice and, uh, uh, so it's kind of nice. It was refreshing seeing kind of a classic uh, kind of offbeat moment or downbeat moment for the X-Men, uh, like the old series used to be, like when uh, they'd go out to the mall or play baseball or whatever. It kind of has that vibe to it. But of course, there's always a little bit of mischief that, that comes their way. Uh, next up is DC's Superwoman, issue number two. The uh, amazing uh, uh, companion piece to the Dodson cover uh, for issue one. This is the, um, if you haven't been reading, big surprise, Lana Lang um, is now one of two superwomen. Um, I didn't want to spoil it in, in the first one since it was just out, but now that it, time, some time has passed, if you're reading this, you know the Lois Lane version of Superwoman, who was the, super, the Lois Lane from Earth, uh, the New 52 Earth, she died. She died disintegrated and turned to dust. So this is kind of the fallout of that, um, continuing with uh, Lana's dealing with having powers now, and Lex, and um, you get to see some other some other classic characters, uh, uh, some great characters, and you know, Steel shows up, and you get to see maybe who's pulling the strings behind what's going on in this. So this was really cool, enjoyed it, um, and that's probably going to be the end. Um, I don't know, we'll see what happens next issue, if I'm going to keep going with it or not, but it's been cool. Um, very good story. Uh, again, it's just, i got to limit what I'm getting, but I, I wanted to read the second issue to see kind of how that played out. All right, next up is the uh, Action Comics, numbers uh, 963. So we're, we're kind of moving on from the Doomsday story that has been happening, and we're picking up this whole thread of the Clark Kent who has not and never been Superman and thinks everyone's crazy for thinking he's Superman. Um, and we're gonna getting a little bit of the explanation present time and with flashbacks in this issue as to maybe what's been going on and uh, and all that. So uh, Dan Jurgens writing still telling some great stories, but like I said, we're focusing on the non super Clark, um, which as far as I know, I did not see or know existed until the action comics uh, during the Doomsday fight. Okay, coming up next is Mockingbird number seven, picking up where the issue, uh, what is it, issue six left off, with uh, Bobby and Hunter are on the cruise, because um, someone lured her there to give her um, insight or clues, evidence to possibly free Hawkeye from his his trial, which you know if you're reading Civil War two, you already know how that plays out, but. Um, yeah, Marvel in their pacing, I guess, for right now. Uh, so yeah, this is this is a hilarious issue. Tons of little details. Um, I mean, right here in the intro page, chance of alien abduction high. Sunrise, sun. That's just tons of funny little things like this um, throughout the issue. Lots of little details, a little quirky. I love the kind of. Um, snarky fun that this book is having um, with everything and uh, the artwork is great really enjoying it of course it's got a fabulous Joel Jones cover uh, who's been doing a, a bang up job on the covers for this and we'll we'll hear Joel Jones's name come back around here a little bit later in the show show 
Is that what I'm calling this in the video? <laughs> uh, Black Science, number 24. Grant McKay has made a massive sacrifice at the end of issue 23. You kind of see how that plays out here and where it goes and how it affects his family or what's left of it. And it's really interesting. I was I did not expect this issue to go the way it went. Um, but after reading it, it feels like it couldn't have gone any other way. So this is uh, really um, Black Science. The story has been a real slow build. Lots of cool stuff has been happening, but it feels like we're really getting into some heavy duty uh, plot lines here. So uh, check this out. And if you haven't read any of this before, uh, there's plenty of trades out, I think up through volume four in paperback. And um, it's it's amazing. It is a fantastic series. I cannot recommend that highly enough. Between Rick Remender and Mateo Scalera on artwork, it's uh, definitely worth reading. All right. Uncanny Avengers number 14. Uh, this book that seems like it has been coming out so slowly since it debuted three years ago, or whenever that was, two years ago, um, now is shipping like every other week. <laughs> and I'm loving it, because it is the, the only title that's really featuring my favorite character, Rogue. Um, last issue, we see her and Cable getting on a jet, sneaking off with um, Sebastian Shaw and Toad, of all people, to do something. And you're not really sure what they're up to, but it has to do with the uh, coming, upcoming, uh, I believe, the Inhumans, the IVX, the Inhumans versus X-Men story, and uh, the death of X that'll come before that. So um, it's been really cool seeing this and how how the Unity team may not be as unified as it once was and how that all plays out in here. I really enjoy the artwork. Um, there's uh, some things, I, I do have some issues, even though I really like this issue, and you know, I get some really cool stuff with Rogue. Um, I don't know the the way they're kind of doing things in here. I don't know. It just it feels kind of forced, in a way, and it feels like it's kind of falling apart. And I don't mean the team. I just mean the way the story is going. So we'll see what happens. I still like it. Um, like I said, there's still some really cool stuff in here. So we'll just see how this plays out. But right now, um, this would normally be higher on my list. Uh, because it has Rogue in it, but um, I can't just go with brand loyalty and, and say it's the, my favorite pick this week uh, because it wasn't. There's, there's at least two other ones that I enjoyed more. And the first of those two, um, coming back to that Joelle Jones name, Lady Killer, written and drawn by her. Um, I know I've talked about this before. This is a fantastic series, issue two, uh, amazing artwork. Um, it's kind of funny. Uh, Josie is, you know, the the housewife who doubles, uh, mother and housewife who doubles as an assassin at night. She's kind of struck out on her own, moved to Florida, uh, and here she is wondering if uh, she looks too old-fashioned in a one-piece bathing suit when all the other women are wearing bikinis. Um, and you know, it's it's Florida, so you've got it's Christmas time. You've got this guy dressed up as Santa on the beach, and just amazing artwork, crazy stuff. Um, I love it. Just. The whole style and atmosphere. Um, look at this, this great picture here in the, the top over here with this guy sitting in front of the stained glass window. I mean, just amazing art. Really love it. Great story. It's funny. It's quirky. It's intense. It's um, uh, This is a an HBO or M AMC miniseries or uh, short short season series waiting to happen so uh lady killer i cannot recommend that book enough um i know i say that a lot <laughs> about a lot of things but lady killer um if you like crime stories mystery and and kind of uh, all that stuff definitely want to check that out and my uh, number one pick for the week uh because the artwork on the cover the orc inside and the story inside was just so well done, so amazing. Um, I just really loved this. Uh, it's a character who I never really cared about until about three, five years ago when I started reading New 52, and I really like what they're doing with her in this series. So, uh, Wonder Woman number six. This is the last Frank Cho cover. I mean, and look at that. What a cover to go out on. It is impressive. All the detail, the different elements in here. There's Wonder Woman herself. This great kind of very Mooka-esque Art Nouveau 
uh, style cover here. Um, and then Nicholas Scott's art. So this is the uh, even number issue. So this is the Wonder Woman year one storyline where Steve has crashed on the island and this story picks up, this issue picks up with her and Steve returning back to um, the world of men, back to the United States. And this is Wonder Woman's first time encountering them. And I'm seeing things here that uh, I've never really seen before in this story. Um, and I like it, you know, there's a lot of familiar elements, but there's a lot of things different. And I really like it. And just the, the artwork on here, I really want to show you this page, but it would be spoiler. Um, a little more than midway through the issue, there's this awesome full one page spread uh, that is just gorgeous artwork, uh, amazing colors. No dialogue, but it is just a great picture. Um, so yeah, okay, we'll just show you this here. Uh, so Steven and Wonder Woman are flying back and Diana doesn't understand English. He doesn't understand what she's saying. So just all this confusion as you see her getting kind of like processed into essentially a modern day man's world. You know, we usually see her set back a little bit in time, um, but they're kind of skipping over the um, the war period and you're just seeing a lot of interesting things here. Um, and again, great stories. Uh, I just really liked it. This, this, this whole series has been good. I really like this year one story because each issue kind of ends with a really cool couple things happening by the end of the issue. So, so there it is. That is my rundown. Beardy's books for September 16th, excuse me, September 14th, rather 2016. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Um, right back. Let me know what you think. Uh, are you getting any of these books? Is there anything you're reading that I'm missing that I should read? I know there's a bunch of new number ones out today uh, and some other things going on. Um, also, if you're in the York and Mechanicsburg area, make sure you come in to the Mechanicsburg store this Saturday, September 17th. Uh, we're having our creator cookout all day. Well, the, we have a sale running all day and a canned food drive running all day. And we have a special cookout and um, special event with special guests from 11 to 3. So the cookout and the guests are 11 to 3. And the sale and the canned food drive run all day. Canned food drive, uh, every item you bring in that's at least two months or more from expiration gets you an entry into our uh, prize drawings. But there's going to be some cool stuff in there. Um, and again, bring stuff that families can actually use to make meals out of. Like don't bring ramen noodles and, and, and stuff like that. Bring like, you know, vegetables, peanut butter and jelly, uh, uh, coffee, stuff that, that a family can actually build a meal out of. Um, it doesn't have to be cans, but as long as it's in intact boxes with, uh, you know, the good expiration, you know, at least two months or more away. Um, we bring those things in, we'll collect them all day at Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. And each item you bring in gets you an entry, or each item you bring gets you an entry into the prize drawing. So if you bring five cans, ten cans, fifty cans, whatever. Um, and let's see, uh, the sale's running in the store all day. The sale is actually running in both stores, York and Mechanicsburg. But the uh, the food drive, I believe the food drive is only in Mechanicsburg, and the special guests and the cookout are only at Mechanicsburg. So uh, check out their Facebook pages, uh, Comics Connection Mechanicsburg, Comics Connection New York, for the details, in case you don't want to watch this all again. And that's it. Hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time, and um, I'll be starting my uh, top 13 countdown once we actually hit the season of fall uh, next week. So. Look forward to presenting my, my top 13 movies. And that's all for Beardy's Books today. I'll catch you guys later.